Aonang has become the go-to place for people who want to explore the Krabi province of Thailand. Aonang is not famous for its beautiful beaches, because there are much nicer beaches close by, but it will keep you entertained after you have finished your excursions for the day. It has a nice selection of affordable accommodation, but most importantly of course, close by, we will find paradise islands with beautiful beaches, amazing and challenging hikes, great nature, and some other must-see destinations. In this video, we will introduce you to Aonang, take you on a couple of tours and show you what you can typically do here in a 3-4 day visit, including a hotel review at the end. So where is Aonang? Well, it's in the southwest of Thailand, very close to and can easily be combined with trips to other popular tourist destinations like Phuket, Phi Islands and Koh Lanta. Aonang itself lies on the coast just 30 minutes from Krabi town and 40 minutes from Krabi airport. So let's first have a look at Aonang itself. From my experience, most of the action in Aonang takes place along the beach road and a little bit up on the right side. The beach road is quite calm and relaxed during the day, when most people are out on a tour somewhere or lying on the beach or by the pool. But as soon as the sun sets, it gets busy, when all the tourists come out for their evening entertainment. You can of course do all your tourist shopping here, or maybe buy a tour for the coming days. And there are many tours to choose from. And of course no Thai tourist city without its own ladyboy show. If you feel like a little bit more masculine entertainment, there's a Thai boxing stadium close by. As for the restaurants in Aonang, there are surprisingly many Indian restaurants. But no matter what kind of restaurant, they all also had a variety of Thai dishes to offer. Me though, I tended to end up in this restaurant. Not because of its Mexican theme, but because when you're traveling alone, it's nice to have some entertainment. And this guy, with his one-man band, really kept it going every night. And from the menu, I can recommend the grilled white snapper with tamarind sauce. The assortment of Thai curry is also not bad. And if you're not that hungry, maybe just some fried pork with rice. Of course there are many other restaurants along the same road, and this is another version of the white snapper with tamarind sauce. I really like that dish. If you're more into street food, or are traveling on a budget, there's a great place called RCA, a little bit up on the right side of Beach Road. And for another type of entertainment, you can meet these guys almost every day on the beach. There is a small nightlife scene in Aonang, but we'll get back to that at the end of the video. For now, here's just a nice memory for our English viewers. So, let's get out of town. You might have heard of Riley Beach, a secluded little paradise very close to Aonang. But it's not possible to get there by road, so you have to take a boat. From Aonang, there's a great boat service from the corner of Beach Road and right side. At the long tail boat service here, you can buy a ticket for 100 baht or 200 baht return. The price is fixed, so no need to haggle. When you bought your ticket, just wait in the waiting area until there's a boat ready to take you to Riley Beach. Do remember though, that you have to walk into the water and up into the boat. So this is probably not the best transportation method for older people. So after a 20 minute refreshing boat ride, you arrive on Riley Beach. This amazing place has arisen from a peaceful fishing village to a busy and very popular tourist destination thanks to its imposing limestone cliffs and its beautiful beach. And while it's no doubt that Riley is set in a paradise-like surrounding, I must admit that I was a little bit disappointed in the beach itself, as I have seen more beautiful beaches other places in Thailand. 
But that was before I realized there's actually another beach close by that's even more beautiful than Riley Beach itself. And to get there, you first have to walk through what can be considered as Riley's main street. This street is where you'll find all the restaurants, bars, coffee shops and some tourist shopping. The atmosphere in this place is very nice even in the daytime, so I can just imagine that it must be amazing at night time. So, after walking through this main street you will get to East Riley. This place does not have a nice beach and is mostly used for its very long pier, which makes it possible for even larger boats to arrive at Riley. So from here you just walk until you get to the corner of East Riley, where there's a kind of a nature trail that takes you along some very interesting limestone cliffs with even some small caves. Watch your head though, because they're not very nice to bump into. Here you can also feed the monkeys, or sorry you cannot feed the monkeys, but you can have a look at them. After a couple of minutes you arrive at Pra Nang Beach, and you immediately realize that this is the place to go if you want to go for a swim in the Riley area. The area where you enter the beach is dominated by high limestone karsts and many climbing trails. And of course in the area you can sign up for a course if you want to learn more about this port. Here you will also find the famous Pra Nang Cave or the Princess Cave. Yes, it's a cave full of penises in all sizes and shapes. This popular tourist attraction is actually a sacred place where local fishermen and boatsmen still make offerings in the form of incense and flowers, to ensure a safe journey as well as fertility and virility, with a nice view. And after that experience, I was ready for my Pad Thai lunch on one of the local restaurants before heading back to Ao Nang. So the next day I was ready for a bit more physical challenging activities. Northwest of Aonang there's a very distinct mountain peak. This peak is very visible when you're out driving in the area, and also visible when you're out on the water. It is of course the famous Dragon Crest Mountain. This mountain has one of the best hikes in the Krabi province, and also one of the best views. So when going to this place I wasn't really familiar with the transportation system in Aonang, so I ended up in one of these. For 400 baht, the tuk-tuk driver took me from Aonang to Dragon Crest. Of course if I had known that the road was a combination of fast highways and very bumpy roads, I would probably have taken a taxi, but no big deal. 40 minutes later I arrived at the start of the Dragon Crest hike. And they do pay attention to safety Hello. at this place. <coughs> Before you start the hike, you have to sign in with your name, your telephone number and the time you started the hike. They also make sure that you have enough water with you before you start. And according to the supervisor here, it would take around 2 hours up and 2 hours back down again. So I just started out on the hike. Uh, and I'm racing against the clock because it will start raining in about 2-3 hours. So I'll probably try to walk up quite fast to get my drone shots from the top and then going down again a bit more slowly. The hike starts out quite flat and easy and then you get to some stairs and the terrain becomes steep and a bit more challenging. 2.1 kilometers then I put up some, some ropes All along you can see how far you have come. And if you have an Apple Watch, it's even more fun. It's nice. And still one and a half kilometers to go. So we're 2.5 kilometers in. Now the trail is going downhill. Which is a nice change. 
split three, split pace, 18 minutes, 26 seconds per kilometer. After about 2.7 kilometers, there's an option for a small detour to a little waterfall. However, I had heard that there was no water there, so I didn't bother. Up here, there's also some very interesting nature. Just a few hundred meters from the top, you really get the sense of the beautiful view. It's a bit uh, stony and steep. To reach the absolute top, you have to climb up a small wooden ladder. And the hike up took me about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Next day, it was time to get out on the water. As mentioned earlier, Aonang is close to a lot of very interesting destinations. But if you want to go for a day trip from Aonang, there are two boat tours that are the most popular ones. The Four Island Tour takes you to an island group quite close to Aonang, while the Hong Island Tour is a bit further away. I did ask around a bit about these tours, and I was told that the Hong Island Tour was the best one, so that's the one I chose. For this tour I was picked up at my hotel around 8.30 in the morning. And about 15 minutes later we arrived at the speedboat pier. This pier is where most of the boat tours depart from and it's very busy in the morning when everybody is leaving at the same time. So the price for this full day trip was 1250 baht. And as I booked it through my hotel you might be able to get it cheaper from one of the agents in the city. So then it was time to start our tour, and luckily for us, we got a boat that takes 20 people, but we were only 11, so plenty of room on board. And after a quick stop at Riley East to pick up some more passengers, we were headed towards the Hong Island group. With this boat, it took about 30 to 40 minutes to get to Hong Island, but if you rent a long tail boat, it will take you about an hour. Our first stop on the trip was Hong Island itself, which is characterized by a huge lagoon in the middle of the island, with a tiny entrance on the north side. It's not possible to go ashore in the lagoon and the water is very shallow, so it's only possible to visit when the tide is high. And according to our guide, boats get stuck here all the time. This is of course a very popular destination, so the lagoon gets filled up with boats quite quickly. And very soon they all line up in front of the entrance to get that perfect photo. After visiting the lagoon, we went around the island to the main landing site on Hong Island. This side has a very long pier and the capacity to welcome a lot of boats at the same time. It has a very long and beautiful beach, perfect for relaxation and swimming. And also a quite large area for eating. I guess most of the tour groups have their lunch at this place. But... Just sitting, minding my own business and this guy comes along. Yes, there are a lot of monitor lizards here. These amazing and a little scary creatures normally do not attack people, but you are advised to stay away from them, because they can give you a nasty little whip with their tail if you get too close. So enjoy your lunch! <laughs> On Hong Island there are also a couple of other things to do. The Hong Island Nature Trail is a short 10 minute walk through some interesting nature. They also have a few tsunami hazard zones here, 
and you can learn a little about the wildlife. A bit more challenging are the 400 plus steps up to Hong Island viewpoint. It is worth it though, because the view at the top is amazing. So after Hong Island, we were off to our second destination of the trip, which was Lao Lading Island. This is a smaller island with a very short landing strip, so the first time we arrived, it was actually full. So we had to turn around. The second time though, we managed to get to shore. Lao Lading has a small but very beautiful area perfect for swimming and relaxation, but not much more. Like many of the islands around here, the limestone cliffs gives the place a very special atmosphere. Here you can also find the famous Instagram swing, which is perfect for those very special pictures. The last destination of our day trip was Pakpia Island, just a few minutes north of Lao Lading. Another beautiful paradise island with a very nice beach. And if you wonder why I didn't fly my drone on the first two islands we visited, it's because you actually need a special permit if you want to fly a drone in the national parks in Thailand. It's not sufficient with a normal drone permit, which I do have. On Pakpia Island though, I was allowed to fly by the keeper that was stationed on the island. And that was only because I already had my other papers in order. Well, another beautiful island visited, and that was the end of a fantastic day on the ocean that can definitely be recommended. The next day it was time for a trip inland to a very special Buddhist temple in the mountains around 25 kilometers from Aonang. It is of course the Tiger Cave Temple. And to get there I tried out the Grab app for the first time. Here I found a lady that would take me there for around 500 baht. And she actually offered to wait for me there for 3 or 4 hours and then take me back again for the same amount. Which I of course accepted. The Tiger Temple is much more than the temple up on the hill. On ground level, it has a number of temples and a variety of both religious and other statues, including the royal family and statues of Hindu gods, here represented by the four-faced Brahma and Shiva's son himself, the boy with an elephant head, Ganesh. The name of the temple area is derived from a legend that says a huge tiger used to live in one of the caves. The actual cave, where it's believed that the tiger lived, is now built in and guarded by a number of Buddha statues, as well as some live monks. To get to the small cave, you have to walk up some stairs. And this is where the tiger is supposed to have lived. The cave is guarded by an emerald Buddha statue, somewhat similar to the one you can see in the Grand Palace in Bangkok. If you walk further into this large area, you will find a huge pagoda dedicated to Guan Yin, the Buddhist goddess of compassion and mercy. If you have seen my video from Koh Samui, you might have noticed that at the Plai Laem temple on Koh Samui, they have an even larger statue of Guan Yin. Next to the Guan Yin pagoda, you will find some stairs that are not the stairs leading up to the main temple, but stairs leading to a place they call Wonderland. It's a path in the jungle. And I'm all alone, which is nice. This is a sort of a nature trail going through a kind of a mystic forest with a very special atmosphere and a big Buddhist shrine. Some of the monks live in caves and small houses here. 
this little hidden gem can absolutely be recommended. And apart from one monk, I was actually all alone in this forest. This must be one of the biggest bamboo trees I've ever seen. So then I was ready for the 1260 steps up to the temple on the mountain. I had heard a lot about these steps before I came here, and many people say it's a very hard climb. But I think, as long as you are in normal physical shape, it's not a big problem. Just take your time, bring a lot of water and enjoy the view. All along you can see how many steps you have climbed. I can't deny though that at 1240 steps it was nice to see the top of the stairs. The top is dominated by a large golden Buddha statue, but there are also a number of smaller Buddha statues as well as a few Hindu statues. I can totally understand that for many this feels like a very spiritual place. Returning to ground level, you walk into these conveniently placed shops at the base of the stairs. And I can definitely recommend a short stop here to refill some energy. In total, I spent a little over 3 hours at the Tiger Cave Temple. On the way back to Aonang, I stopped at the Mountain View Cafe and Restaurant. I found out about this place from the Travels on Toast channel here on YouTube. So a little shout out to them. Not a lot of people when I was here, but this is certainly a very special place that is built into a tropical forest. The food here is also not bad. So before we have a look at the nightlife in Aonang, I want to show you briefly an interesting and easily accessible trail from Aonang beach to Pai Plong beach next door, called the Monkey Trail. Just walk to the very end of the beach on the southeastern side and you will see where it got its name from. From here you can just follow the trail and along it you will see a lot of monkeys. And to me it looked like these are the nice kind of monkeys and not the ones that steal your stuff. But no guarantees of course. Five to ten minutes later, you will reach Pai Plong Beach. This beach is a bit more secluded than Anang Beach, and I guess it's mostly used by the guests at the Santara Grand Beach Resort, which occupies all the land behind the beach. Well, you don't travel to Aonang for its nightlife, but it does have a small nightlife scene if you feel like hitting a bar or a nightclub. One popular spot on the corner of Beach Road is the Boogie Bar. This is a kind of a combination between a bar and a restaurant and a live venue. Most of the seating here is directed towards the center of the place, so you can relax, eat your dinner, have some beers and watch the entertainment. Most of the nightlife spots though are located in a big complex called Centerpoint. Here you will find the bar that I showed you earlier, which is perfect for an early beer or to watch the weekend football. And especially cool if you're watching the World Cup with a huge crowd of Brits. Behind this bar there are a few other bars that will serve your drinks of choice. If you want more of a nightclub experience, you can walk upstairs to a place called Loft R&B. 
This is a restaurant and sports bar that gradually turns into a nightclub in the evening. Perfect for the youngest crowd. Nothing in sight, forever in flight. Follow those lines, we'll make it this time. Blurry street lights, work as a guide to memories that we'll make it tonight. Oh yeah, we'll make it tonight. Yeah. And as you might know, a lot of things have become legal lately in Thailand. If you want more of a local nightlife experience, you can go up to the top floor of this establishment to Upbeat Bar. This is where the locals and the Thai tourists come to party in the weekend. Another place I stumbled upon on my way home on Saturday night was Coco Hostel. This place really had a nice party vibe late at night. As mentioned earlier, Aonang has a good selection of affordable accommodation. And after a long and careful selection process, I decided to stay at the Panan Krabi Resort. So let's take the positive sides first. The hotel is very conveniently located just a few minutes walk from the beach road. The hotel has a large and very nice pool area, which is suitable for both adults and children. This area also has a bar. You can even get a room with your own little private pool in this area. In addition, the hotel has a rooftop pool with a nice view and a bar here as well. Panan has a very nice breakfast which offers everything you can expect from a hotel in this range. Outside, they also have an egg station where you can get your fried eggs or an omelette of your choice. The rooms at Panan are also very nice, but that is when you get a nice room. And here comes the negative side. The first room I got had a door leading into the adjacent room. And you could hear every little word that was said inside that room. But the worst part was that the room was extremely moist. You could actually smell it the moment you opened the door. And after a while, with the air condition on, the floor was actually wet from the moist, as you can see in this photo. In addition, I ordered a sea view room, and they gave me this room with a big building in the middle of the view, when the view was supposed to be like this, as the pictures on hotels.com. Anyway, as you have probably guessed by now, I complained and got a new room the next day, which was very nice. I especially liked the balcony, which was perfect for those couple of hours between your daytime activities and your nighttime activities. Even when the afternoon rain set in. It's raining. Well, that's all from me from Aonang and the Krabi province. Hope you enjoyed it.